Today's hearing providing no evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Of course, that really wasn't their purpose. The Dems had another agenda in mind. They ignored evidence in scandals throughout the Obama administration, including, here are just a few, the unmasking of Trump transition officials, the IRS targeting scandal, targeting conservatives, no investigation there. Where was the FBI? Oh, yes, the Operation Fast and Furious scandal. My goodness, there, the Attorney General, well, he lied to Congress and claimed falsely executive privilege over 64,000 documents. The Attorney General was, as a result, held in contempt of Congress. And Benghazi, we know what happened there. My, my, they lied and they lied some more. And no prosecution, no final report from the FBI. The Clinton email scandal, nothing here, move along. Oh, yes, it's just a matter, not an investigation. Uh, as uh, Attorney General Loretta Lynch uh, put her hand on the scale of justice and on apparently the neck of the FBI director. And uh, the Justice Department, of course, spying on journalists, including our own James Rosen, and the Associated Press, and it goes on and on. We're talking about a rancid, stinking swamp that grows. It's not draining yet. Joining me now to discuss Democratic obstruction, subversion, the fallout from today's hearing, Olympic Media Managing Editor, Editor of the Daily Caller, Katie Freitas. Good to have you with us, Katie. Chairman of the American Conservative Union, Matt Slap. Katie, let's turn to you. How did, in your judgment, the Attorney General do today? I think Jeff Sessions was fantastic. He was fired up. He was aggressive. He was passionate. You don't see him raising his voice. You don't see that kind of emotion, that force coming from Sessions. And I think that speaks to a man who's speaking with a clear conscience, who's standing by his convictions and is refusing to be bullied by people that he's known in the Senate for decades. But so I was really impressed not, with him. I think he stood by it. Yeah, but they're not reciprocating in the Senate. Uh, his colleagues, as he pointed out, of some 20 years, who, when he was there, one of the most, if not the most respected senator among the hundred, uh, they didn't give a, a darn. Nope. Uh, and they attacked like, <laughs> uh, you know, the hyenas they are. Yeah, I thought. Uh, I mean, it was awful to watch. And I thought John McCain and Marco Rubio were particularly disrespectful and rough on him. And I'm looking for that honest Democrat to step forward and say, you know what? There's no there there to the underlying controversy, which it really isn't happen. a controversy. They made it clear it's that it will never happen. It's not going to happen. And I think that's what I think. I the, thought Dianne Feinstein might be that person mm -hmm. calling as she did for an investigation of Loretta Lynch and right. her conduct uh, with uh, James Comey, uh, calling um, an investigation a matter, but not to be. We get Republicans get stuck. We get hogtied for doing what we're constitutionally allowed to do. The, pre the FBI director serves at the pleasure of the president. U.S. attorneys like this fool in New York serve at the pleasure of the president. The president could have fired Jim Comey because he was too tall. Any reason he wants. We don't even <laughs> have to give a reason, and we got to stop yeah. explaining I was, the why. I was surprised, Katie, at uh, Rod Rosenstein uh, telling the committee that he absolutely would not fire him uh, except for cause. Uh, as if that was the standard and that it was absolutely an independent, uh, 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 you know, th this is not an absolutely independent FBI. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not an absolutely independent special counsel. It's why it's a special counsel, not an independent counsel. And they, like every person in the executive department of this government, are, uh, report directly uh, or indirectly to the president. Period. End of story, right? Yeah, well, so the thing here is that a lot of this with Mueller, it's a non-story. So Rudy just spouts this off on TV and says this thing, and it makes you scratch your head because you're reading between the lines. He didn't talk with Trump. No one told him this. And honestly, it's another narrative for the mainstream oh, media and Democrats right. to use as a sounding board. It's using its about ability for them to use this as a sounding board for them to say what they want to say, to make their opinions. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what any of these people have or have not said. Democrats you are going to like say. You sound like you're despairing of the national left-wing media, Katie. 
Do you? No, no. <laughs> Thank God for the Daily Caller. I mean, come well, on. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's as it's, we look forward. The, the Dems themselves have embarrassed themselves again. Uh, Chuck Schumer is. I mean, he is. He has become a repugnant figure. I do not know what the Democrats do here. They have no leadership. The ones they do have uh, uh, pretending to be leaders are all dropping F-bombs and swearing yeah. uh, as quickly as they can imagine the word. <laughs> Look, they are hashtag resistance. They are about stopping everything. They stand for nothing. They're not talking about their You remember agenda? when they called the Republicans the party of no? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know what you call this. <laughs> the Democrats are the, the party of hell, though. And by the way, some other word Lou, it's it. not going to work at the ballot box in the long run. In the end, you got to stand for something. And they just can't be anti-Trumpers. Well, tell them. <laughs> they don't <laughs> listen to me. Well, this is one of the problems. I don't, I don't think they're listening to anyone. Katie, it's great to have you with us. Thanks so much. Sorry we're out of time. Thanks. Katie Freitas, thank you. Matt Slav, thank you.